So now we're getting into some very important types of reactions. So uh, we should try to go through the mechanism uh, for this reaction. I'm sorry, you were saying? Sorry, so, so we have an Easter. Yeah, we're starting with uh, uh, the Easter. Is that how you pronounce it? Is it Easter? I've always said Esther. Esther. But anyway, I, I, I could be wrong. So anyway, I pronounce it Esther. So. She keeps commenting under her breath. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's an Esther. All right, I sometimes do have bad pronunciations. But anyway, all right, I, I say Esther. Esther. All right, so anyway, we do have an Esther here. Yeah. So what's going to happen first? Protonation. Yeah, we really have to have a protonation because we have a strong acid over here. Who should we protonate? Yeah, what's the purpose of protonating this carbonyl oxygen? To make this more electrophilic. Remember, the purpose here is we want to have a nucleophile attack the carbonyl. Uh, why do we need this catalyst here? Because we're lower down on the chart now. These two top rows don't need catalysts because they're so reactive. It's only when we're here in the bottom rows that we need catalysts at all. And this is when the mechanisms get a little more complicated with all the protonations and deprotonations. But the two top rows are so reactive, we don't need a catalyst. Here we need our catalyst. We're dealing with less reactive molecules, and so we need to make them more electrophilic. Yeah, because I was right. just looking at it, and I was like, oh, CH3, that's not resonance stabilized. That doesn't right. look like a very good leaving group to me. That, that's, that's really the same thing you were saying. That's right. Okay. That's, a, that's, that's, the reason, that's one reason why this is less reactive. That's right. Okay. That's why it's down here in the chart. OK. That's like using a uh, leaving group as an example, but isn't the whole point, so we make it more electrophilic? Well, the fact that we have a poor leaving group, so the problem is the fact that we have a poor leaving group makes it harder for the reaction to um, for each for the reaction to, to give us a good yield. In order to get a better yield, we need to be catalyzing each of us, uh, and we need to uh, put in as much help as we can in each step. So we're but you're right. More electrophilic that will help in some ways because I'm That's saying right. like making it more electrophilic doesn't make it a better leaving group. It doesn't like. Super That's right. One. one way to look at that is though, if one of the steps is hard, it helps to make the other step easier. But the other way to look at it is eventually we'll make this into a better leaving group too. Because this acid can do more than one thing. As long as, oh, so one way of putting it is, as long as the acid's around, it might as well also give us a more electrophilic oxygen here. And quickly, I know we did this before. It makes it more electrophilic because when I do protonate it, I can do some kind of resonance, right? So we're giving it that carbonyl to be a big delta positive. Actually, um, uh, actually, I think that the analysis should be different. Okay. This, uh, it makes it more electrophilic simply because it gives it a positive charge. Things with positive charges are better electrophiles. I think you might have been thinking about the analysis for leaving groups. Um, a good leaving group is something that's resonance stabilized, uh, but a good electrophile is just somebody with a positive charge. This is now more electrophilic because it's got this big fat positive charge. Don't we care there. about what that carbon is, not the oxygen, which is resonance? Yeah. Well, oh, that's true. So that's true. You could right. show another resonance form with a positive charge on the carbon. That's yeah. right. Okay. But so even if you don't do that, it. yeah. Even if you don't do that, even though this is the one with the formal charge, it's really spread over the whole molecule anyway. Anytime you have a formal charge in a molecule, the charge is really spread and making everybody more positive. But you're right. A good way to see that is to draw the resonance form where the positive charge is on the carbon here. Okay. So that gives us our protonated form. All right. And then we should uh, continue. What's going to happen now?
Yeah, so let's talk about our next step here now. Um, I'm going to keep asterisking the parts that used to be the carbonyl. Now, keeping our eye on the prize, what we want to do now is reform the carbonyl. We want to reform the carbonyl. Uh, who's going to be the L group? Well, we don't want to use this as the L group because it just came in. That would just take us back to where we started. So we have to keep in mind this is the one that we want to use as the L group. Now, there's a couple points to make here. Let's say I just did this. Let's say we just did this. Uh, well, as you said, one objection to that is it would give us two positive charges in the same molecule. But there's another objection. What would this look like when it leaves? But I think maybe we talked about in the previous session, in acidic conditions, you should never produce a negative intermediate or product. That's a very important idea that uh, a lot of students never get clear about. Um, that's the most important principle here for why we don't, can't, can't kick off the leaving group yet. In acidic conditions, you should never produce a negative intermediate or product. And that should be intuitive because acidic conditions tend to keep things neutral and positive. So if you've gotten to the point where something's negative, you must have missed uh, a protonation that would happen first. All right, so we should never produce a negative intermediate like this when we're in acidic conditions like we are here. So backing up, um, there's two things we have to do here. We need to deprotonate the original nucleophile, and we need to add a proton to this leaving group. Uh, you can do those either in two steps or one step, uh, whichever you like. So if you wanted to, you could have the chloride take this proton. Well, that's certainly one of the protons that we need to get rid of. Uh, why is this a good proton to take? Because here we have a positive charge. We okay. like getting rid of positive charges. Okay. So we could just have the chloride take this proton, and that gets us back to neutral, like we, will, uh, like, we like to be. Um, and then, what are we going to do next? Uh, well, remember that the whole reason why this is less reactive is because it has a poor leaving group. The whole reason this is uh, on the bottom of the chart is that this is not a great leaving group. Well, how can we make this into a better leaving group? Yeah, you don't sound too happy about that. But isn't that a very standard way to make things into better leaving groups? That's a reaction we've used uh, repeatedly throughout the course. Protonation makes things into better electrophiles and leaving groups. We've seen that almost every reaction throughout the whole course. Protonation makes things into better electrophiles and leaving groups. Uh, that should be kind of clear uh, because protonation gives things positive charges. And positive charges tend to be good leaving groups and electrophiles. Sorry, you said protonation makes things better nucleophiles and leaving groups? Electrophiles. electrophiles. Right. And why is that? Well, protonating it makes it plus. Right. And why is that a good electrophile? Well, elect something with a positive charge likes to be an electrophile and receive electrons. And why is something with a positive charge a good leaving group? Because a leaving group is somebody who leaves while taking electrons, while something with a positive charge would like to take those electrons. That is a little counterintuitive if you're making something more electrophilic and then it becomes a leaving group, because a better leaving group holds a negative charge better. So I think I see what you're asking. Is it hold a negative uh, a leaving group is somebody who wouldn't mind picking up a negative charge. Um, so a decent leaving group is somebody who wouldn't mind picking up a negative charge when it, leaves, when it leaves. But an excellent leaving group is somebody who doesn't have to pick up a negative charge when it leaves. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, okay. yeah, this is actually a, a really crucial idea. Uh, this is not a minor point. Uh, this is one of the whole bases of the whole course. Things with positive charges are better leaving groups and electrophiles, and things with negative charges are better nucleophiles. Uh, that's, that's not a minor point. Uh, again, remember, we just deprotonated uh, this, uh, this original nucleophile over here. Uh, and now it makes sense that we want to protonate the leaving group. Uh, hopefully it makes sense now, because protonated leaving groups are better leaving groups. Uh, again, that was the whole reason this wasn't that reactive in the first place, because this is uh, not that great a leaving group without the protonation. Where is it going to get the proton from? Just to use uh, the regenerated acid catalyst that we just formed um, and protonate this oxygen over here. So the conventional way to draw this now would be like this.
Uh, and now we protonated this. And what was the, the purpose of that? To make this into a better leaving group. Things with positive charges are the best leaving groups. Uh, okay, so one good thing to do here is to have somebody deprotonate the original nucleophile and then have that same person protonate the leaving group.